Ladies and gentlemen on the Shrek Game Today on video, we're going to be discussing all things GPU related. There's been an awful lot of developments over the past 24 hours or so. We're going to be starting things out with AMD because they are making some announcements concerning what they're planning to show over at GDC 2016. Then we're going to hop over to NVIDIA regarding their Pascal architecture and some problems with their drivers as well. And then finally, we're going to finish things off with SK Hynix in regards to the yields of high bandwidth memory too. So starting things out with Camp AMD. As you probably know, if you've been following along with the tech industry for any time now, AMD have a really weird way of handling their marketing. I'm not necessarily saying I really think it's the best way of doing things, but it seems to work for them. Now... They are going to be hosting at GDC an event called Caspian. I'm going to read out how you spell that because I'm probably butchering the name. C-A-P-C-A-I-C-I-N. It's basically the ingredient that makes uh, chilies hot. Now, AMD have been talking a lot about spicing things up at GDC. And Chris Hook, who is the marketing director, has tweeted on his profile pic. There's going to be some previews. <coughs> and what would they entail? Well, for one, it's going to be the Fury X2, which, great, but let's face it, it's not really the, the pièce de résistance. It's not what most people are wanting to see from AMD at this point. It is Polaris, and they will be previewing Polaris. Finally, they're also going to be showing off improvements to their own software in regards to Radeon graphics cards. Now, obviously, we don't know all of the details yet, because otherwise it wouldn't be much of an announcement, but in the industry, GDC is extremely important. Whether it's AMD, NVIDIA, whomever, it's the event that most in the industry are probably most looking forward to. And I think this one in March is going to be really exciting. I think it's going to be pretty awesome. I'm going to read out the PR announcement. Um, the developer and press comp press event, excuse me, entitled Capsian, will be hosted by Radeon... Technologies Group Senior Vice President and Chief Architect Raja Kadori and showcase AMD's world-class hardware, software and gaming partners. Named after the compound that delivers a pepper's spicy kick, Caspian will explore the inner essence of the graphics processing unit, GPU, and how it and how it powers innovations in gaming and virtual reality. The webcast will feature an inside look at the latest technical advancements affecting both the enthusiast and developer communities as they approach the real-time video webcast will be the event accessible for AMD's Investor Relations page, which is ir.amd.com. I'll read that out one more time. ir.amd.com. Um, excuse me, ir.amd.com. There you go. And a replay of the webcast can be accessed a few hours after the conclusion of the live event and will be available for one year after the event. So, you've got a while to watch it. And it will also be available on AMD's YouTube channel anyway, so that will obviously be archived for as long as you need it. Now, unfortunately, what we don't know is everything they're going to show about, or show, but what we do know um, is some of the other events they're planning to show off. So while we don't know the exact nature of this webcast, we can at least get some idea based upon other lectures. One of them is Direct3D12, or DX12 if you prefer, and Vulcan, Lessons Learned. Basically, AMD are going to be showing off what they've learned regarding the two new APIs, Liquid VR. Liquid VR, by the way, is the middleware that they are using to basically reduce latency and improve development on virtual reality uh, headsets. GPU Open, which is unlocking game development with uh, open source. It's essentially... Um, Computing, GPU computing algorithms, so then you can use that to uh, do various tasks in your game, whether it's physics or whether it's, you know, calculating your shopping list. Um, optimizing DirectX 12 and Vulkan performance with AMD Code XL, which is a suite for basically improving performance. Um, and then multi-platform GPU ray tracing solutions with Fire Render and Fire Rays, which is a... GPU intersection acceleration library for support of heterogeneous systems and Fire Render is a technology state-of-the-art physically based rendering engine enabling interactive workflows for photorealistic images. There's a whole bunch of words but it's kind of showing where they want to focus. In other words, it's the next generation of APIs. Awesome. Next thing. 
Now, this one is in regards to NVIDIA. So, as we all know, the next generation of architectures is coming out from both AMD and NVIDIA. With Pascal, it's going to be 16nm, and obviously is also going to be utilizing HPM2. Now, there have been a couple of different Pascal graphics cards that have already been shipped to various NVIDIA testing facilities. It's happened uh, multiple occasions. I believe it's around maybe four or five. Don't quote me. But there have been a couple of new ones which have popped up. So I guess technically now it's, well, six or seven, depending which one's right. Um... Now, what we don't know, of course, is the exact nature of the testing piece of hardware that's sent over, but it's probable that they're becoming closer and closer to the final design. From what we can tell based on other rumours, Pascal is supposedly going to be shown at GTC, which is in April, and then will finally be launched in June. Now, whether this is true or not, we don't know. However, supposedly, Sources are whispering, claiming, and making all those assumptions that it's going to happen during uh, Zhen Song Huang's uh, keynote speech, which is taking place on April 5th. Now, what we have seen is two extra shipments in, uh, sorry, from Zuba. Uh, these prices, by the way, that I'm going to give you are in INR, which is Indian rupees, but then we're going to convert that as well. Now, it's worth noting that these values are extremely high, so it's probable that these are not low-end cards. Now, there are two values. The first is the value total, which is because there are four of them in one case and three in another. And the second is value per unit. So, in the case of the first one, it's computer graphics card 6991G610000000. Country of origin is China. And that sucker comes to 47,000 Indian rupees, which is about 600 US dollars, obviously, depending on the exchange rate. And the second one is computer graphics card 699129140076100. And this one's actually more expensive. It works out to be about 60,521 rupees, but that's not actually about, is it? That's a pretty damn exact value. And that works out to be around the $900 mark. Now, there are a couple of things to note. The first is that they don't necessarily reflect the final value of a product. There are multiple reasons behind that. It could be that eventually the engineering samples become cheaper to produce. It could be maybe that the engineering samples don't even have all of the components, so they might end up being more expensive. I'm sure some of you are probably going to say, well, you know, the first one, the 600 one, is possibly something like the, the, the 980 Ti equivalent, and the second one is going to be like the GTX um, equivalent, but, I'm sorry, the GeForce uh, Titan X equivalent. But unfortunately, we just don't know at the moment. But it's kind of cool. But weirdly enough, another set of reports has popped up. Two different reports, actually. That NVIDIA are planning to, of course, launch the Pascal architecture at Computex. But some are claiming that we won't see the desktop derivative first. Some are claiming that Pascal is first going to appear for notebooks and basically gaming orientated low power devices. Now how true that is, we don't know, and how much of a lead time the uh, mobility sector actually has over desktop, we don't unfortunately know. Now the final thing I want to discuss with NVIDIA are based upon drivers. The reason I want to bring this to your attention is not ha 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 driver errors or anything like that, but if suddenly your PC is having issues and you've just updated your drivers or either automatically or manually, this could be the reason. So essentially, if you're running V364.47, you might have some big issues. What issues? Well, it depends on how lucky or unlucky you are. Um, some people are assuming that it's based upon express installation. 
Now, they are saying that you should not do it. NVIDIA themselves have said, and I quote, if you happen to have a pending installation of 364.47, do not install it and either use the 364.51 beta or go for the WHQL certified version. Now, by the way, just for your clarification, if you're an experienced user, always wait for w always use uh, WHQL. I'm sorry. If you're not an experienced user, definitely go for WHQL. But honestly, 99% of the time, I've never really had any big problems with betas, but that's just me. But what type of issues could you be experiencing? A whole fuck ton. I know that's not exactly a a uh, very helpful thing for me to say, but seriously, they're just a fuck ton of issues. Do some Googling, because I'll be here all day. But there's issues ranging from multi-monitor problems, which, that's a problem, but it's not that big of a deal. You wouldn't be super angry about it. You'd be like, okay, that's kind of annoying. But bigger issues include black screens, blue screens of death. Uh, you could have infinite loops. You could not boot. You know, words, it will not physically go into Windows. And, yeah, just not good. Now, issues like this pop up. AMD have had them, Intel have had them, and NVIDIA have had them. NVIDIA have had some really fucked up software recently, I have to say. We all know about the whole Gameworks issue inside of Gears of War, which, not saying that that's specifically their fault, but I think, and this is somewhat off of the realms of this video but i really don't this is one of the reasons i really dislike the whole black box issues with gameworks um you know i'm not going to criticize nvidia too much for one driver release but it's pretty weak that this level of screw up got through i'm not gonna lie this this one's pretty bad if it was like an intermittent issue that's okay but a whole load of users are experiencing problems with this so I would suggest, as NVIDIA do some uh, investigations, stick with an older version. Um, don't play around, especially if you're using your system for work. If you don't really give a shit and you're just using your PC to game, by all means, try out the beta. But in my opinion, you want to make sure they've got all the errors out. And if you're using your system for either work or some other important thing, whether it's school, whether it's actual physical office work, whether it's 3D rendering, whether it's video production, and you need that thing to be, you know, not fall over, then definitely stick with the WHQL, at least in this instance. Anyway, finally, this one's a bit of a shorty. Um, essentially, SK Hynix. They are fairly instrumental when it comes to the production of high bandwidth memory 2. And they are going to be mass producing 4 gigabytes of the sucker, 4 gigabyte HBM2 DRAM, in the third quarter of this year, so 2016. Now, obviously, this is really important because this is going to be followed up with 8 gigabytes DRAM dies in the fourth quarter. And obviously, the reason that this is extremely important is because as we start to increase the demands of graphics, in other words, we start to improve the graphical quality of games, memory starts to become a problem. Uh, two gigabytes right now for high resolution is not going to do it. Three gigabytes is becoming a problem indeed. And four gigabytes is probably going to last to about the end of the year at high resolutions. Um... It might do better if you're in a multi mono if you're on a multi GPU setup. Before anyone jumps on that, remember with DirectX 12, you can better utilize the memory across two GPUs. However, that does not help if the developer decides not to utilize that functionality, or B, they just don't even use DX12 at all. So, yeah, it's just how things are going. But it's a good news, you know, not a particularly amazing. <laughs> lengthy discussion, but it's just bigger DRAMs equal more memory on the GPU equals happiness equals better textures, better quality and shiny stuff. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.